What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overlord here. So horrorhound.com, home for the actual Horrorhound Festival convention that actually goes on the real life thing. They finally revealed that little background poster that we know we all clearly saw during that 23rdday.com countdown which we ultimately ended up getting just the interviews for Imran, not Imran Adams, but for Sydney Craven and then the announcement of her being involved along with Imran Adams, D Wallace and Gary Graham. This poster here was finally revealed. Uh, definitely a solid poster, I would say. A little bit cartoonish, of course, also, but it does look decent. They also released this first official steal of the Horror Hound Festival. This looks, I would say, very decent. I am just going to say decent. Need to see how the rest of the film looks and when it comes to the cinematography, because everything right now does look fine. Definitely looks like they're going to try to stick to the aspect of telling your story in the dark and not overly exposing the creeper in daylight even with the first two films they did that tremendously but jeepers creepers 3 did that horribly when it relates to showing the creeper in daytime and still managing to keep the film creepy and tense so this is a nice shot here the other thing i want to talk about was on the website for horrorhound.com again i'll leave a link to it in the description they went over the original plans as far as it relates to filming for jeepers creepers reborn so what happened is i guess jeepers creepers 4 jeepers creepers reborn was originally going to be completely shot on location at an actual horror hound festival that they were going to host in louisiana in the year of 2020 and this project for how it's how it's reading had been planned for quite some time what happened of course was what we already know has been happening and it's still happening that forced them to have different protocols go down and i guess that's when the decision to start shooting it in the uk was made this also might lend into a bit of a more understanding of why jonathan breck might not have been asked to come back because it could very well be that they originally wanted him to come back but then when everything started getting affected with what what's happening they had to make some alterations probably had slight budget cuts where they felt they couldn't go out and get bricks so they settled with getting jaru benjamin who again shout out to you uh i know i talked to you on instagram hope you knock it out of the park with your recreation of this monster the creeper so they had plans to shoot it on site at an actual horror hound festival in louisiana i think that's where the entire film was going to be shot at but that had to be changed they also i guess we're going to have like people actually attending the event of course where they would be extras in the film and horror hound actually also made comments about victor salva in a not in, in the actual facebook post itself but they posted the image of that horror hound festival from jeepers creepers 4 that you saw earlier they posted that image on facebook on their official facebook page someone asked about salva or kind of alluded to him and they kind of responded with the indication that he sold the rights to oro studios who was one of the production companies involved with this project so no idea how true that is because it could also it could also be that that's what they were told as it relates to getting them to get involved with the project because remember i've also brought up the fact that what it seems to have been the case is what salva did was he leased the rights giving screen media the pass to go out and do whatever they want with the ip for a short period of time while of course they had to pay him for that what whether he's leasing it or sold it he got paid from one of those interactions he had to profit off of this in some capacity he might not be profiting off of jeepers creepers for the film itself but he has to he has to legally profit from either leasing his rights or selling his rights to whether that be oral studios screen media but they're claiming from what i guess got communicated to them he has no belongings or rights to this ip anymore that's what they're claiming again nothing to actually actually check that that's true but that's what they're claiming they're claiming that he has sold the rights to oro studios you can go look at it on their facebook page in the comment section because i don't have any screen caps of it or anything but i know i came across it on facebook uh the other thing we need to talk about is peter brooks character of Stu. so i can't think of your the rest of your name but i'm just gonna call you leo i know leo is a part of your name you made this comment in on one of the other videos where you brought up the fact of what if peter brooks character of Stu? because i know i've made a lot of videos talking about the possibilities of who he is being related to the taggarts being related to someone else who we have just never met from being someone from the bust uh 
you brought up the idea of what if he is actually that track team guy that Trisha and Derry were talking about on their way home in the opening of the original film. So we know that Trisha had a relationship problem in the original film and a lot of you a lot of you did point this out to me too. It seemed to be hinted at that she was getting abused by the guy. Uh, I hope that's not the case because then you're already giving us a, a kind of a horrible place to introduce this character at and find that out and we don't like him off of that alone. Unless he's kind of, you know, changed his ways over time because, you know, that one little instance doesn't define your whole existence. But you brought up the fact that, again, what if he could be Stu Rather, Peter Brooks' character? What if he's Mr. Pilot's Eye Track Team guy? And what we learned is that since they couldn't get, assuming Gina Phillips isn't back as Trisha, what if after the events of the original, what she's been up to is she actually rekindled that relationship with that track team guy. In this case, let's say it was Stu that they were talking about. They've been together ever since she lost Derry. He has stood by her side. He's helped her research the creeper. He's helped her get through all the trauma that she's been dealing with over the past 23 years. They got married. They had a family. Let's say just a kid, just like the original plans for Jeepers Creepers 3. And they are just a happily married couple or just couple in general and he's just been there for making up for that abuse that he brought on to her many years ago he's just been a better man ever since so maybe trisha unfortunately i know you won't like to hear this maybe trisha they could can they could write in that she died off screen prior to the creeper waking up or something else could have happened prompting her to die and you know she just never recovered from her fear of the creeper so Stu feeling like he owes her something again because of the abuse that he probably put her through if that's true he went out of his way to now go out to the taggart barn help stop the creeper finds out the creeper escaped follows it to the horror hound festival and ends up helping the people there as it relates to you know getting justice for trisha and his son or daughter whoever he may have as a family with trisha now but let me know what you guys think about that down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and miss a video in the description i have links to my social media accounts my facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video